Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, several years ago, a wise person suggested to me that prayer is the mortar that connects and unites the many diverse pieces of our lives. Hmm. You know, Jesus modeled that truth in his time here on earth. In fact, we hear him returning to prayer in the text for today, a prayer that he raised the night before he died. Now, it is a prayer raised not for himself, but for others. It is a prayer that was lifted for disciples then and disciples now, for you and for me. It is a prayer request for unity, for protection and truth. It is a gift that Jesus offered that truly keeps on giving. Now, the timeless nature of this prayer perhaps has some of its greatest relevance to society today in the concern for unity, unity. A vision that Jesus offers in prayer that connects to the understanding of peace, shalom, wholeness, completeness. You know, human lives, I get the sense, are far too often separated into categories and divisions, with the reality being that far too many folk today see things in, in dualistic terms. That is, us or them, in or out, this or that, black or white. Jesus sees beyond these countless categories to anticipate a time that in him is already being experienced, where a non-dualistic possibility can be a reality now. Yes, unity in Christ, connected by his life and his love, and this becomes the norm that makes this big vision possible. It relies on an expansive view of Christ, of recognizing and experiencing Christ in all places and all times. You know, it is as the theologian Richard Rohr has suggested, that is, when we get to the mature stages of mystical union, everything becomes a metaphor for the divine. And, and we grab for metaphors to make concrete the mystery that is now in everything and everywhere. You know, Jesus asks in this great prayer for protection, unity, and truth for his followers who are in the world. Indeed, then and now, we who follow in the path of Jesus are in the world, but we are not of the world. Now, sometimes this understanding of the word, the world, can be a bit confusing and support a vision of separation and division. Sin creates this fractured and divided picture, yet creation from its start has been filled with beauty and order, and God himself says that it is good. God has not abandoned his good creation, and he will never abandon us, his beloved creatures. It is in this light that we remain in Christ while we are in the world. The more that we are in Christ, the more we see the loving presence of Christ in the details of our lives and in the faces of our neighbors. The more we are in Christ as we are out in the creation, the more the Christ that we experience outside of ourselves leads us to see and experience the Christ who is in us and who, in fact, makes his home in our hearts. The deeper we go in Christ inside of our hearts, the more we are led to venture out to see, experience, and serve Christ by loving and serving our neighbor as ourself. The unity with Christ becomes deeper, deeper to the point where, where we find ourselves kind of like a drop of water that has fallen into the sea, that just as this drop can no longer be separated from the sea, we cannot be separated from the love of God. Or it's like a log that, that is transformed into light and heat by a flame. We are one with the energy and the source that gives us life. Indeed, nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is ours in Christ Jesus. Yes, it is true that as we continue in the world, there are plenty of examples that are going to seek to distract 
us from, from seeing God and the unity that his love is already making possible in our lives. You know, our experience of life is one of already but not yet. But as people who are one in Christ's love, we are called to continue focusing on the already of God's kingdom, which even now is a present reality. Yes, friends, where there is love, hope remains. And where there is faith, there is the way to recognizing the presence of the living Christ who is the way, the truth, and the life. You know, the noted Danish, Danish theologian Soren Kierkegaard once wrote that if I were to wish for something, I would wish not for wealth or power, but for the passion of possibility, for the eye, eternally young, eternally ardent, that sees possibility everywhere. You know, even on the night before Jesus died, Jesus kept this big picture in mind, a blueprint for life that he has planted in our hearts. His prayer unites our prayers and gives us the, the, the ability to return to this youthful vision where hope springs eternal and new life emerges in ways that Christ uses to keep us forever young in his love. So in the name of Jesus, who prays for us, protects us in the truth of his word, and unites our lives in the power of his love. Amen.